Okay, welcome back to Pennyac Wilderness. Um, if you're following the channel, I've started building this mini round log cabin using the saddle notch style. And that was inspired by wanting to help my neighbor, uh, whose name is Billy, who I grew up with in this community. And he wants to build his own log home. Uh, and I'd like to help him, but I've never built with round logs. So we're starting with a small mini cabin and hopefully that will go well. We'll learn some skills, be a little better at it, and then be able to help him with his build. So in this video, go through the tools that I'm using to do this, and we're trying to keep it quite simple uh, because Billy lives fairly remote, um, has a series of different tools, but we're trying to um, do it without any sort of power tools. So the first thing, uh, and these are in no particular order, but a chainsaw I think is quite necessary unless you're going to do it completely with hand tools. This, chains, this chainsaw is the MS-170. So I think it's near, one of the smaller saws still makes, it's got a smaller size chain. You can go smaller if you want it to be even more detailed. And a couple people have commented on that a smaller saw would work better for the finer cuts. And that's definitely the case, but this saw is also working fine for the level of detail I'm trying to do. So one would be a chainsaw. Two is I built two um, hardwood hammers. So these, these were made out of uh, maple tree. So I just cut a block of maple so big and trimmed it down so that there's a bit of a handle. They're pretty roughly done, but they work. The bigger one I use for banging logs into place and the smaller one I use if I'm using the chisel or the uh, spud, which I'll mention in a minute. And so they're handy, easy to make. I'd made them both with this chainsaw. Next is an ax. We'll be use this to help peel the logs, trim off limbs, and sometimes to work the notches a little bit, and also to break out the, the cuts that we make as we um, sink our chainsaw into the notch. After that is, I think this is called a picaroon. This is a handy tool for lifting and moving logs because you can sink it into the end of the log and then use it to lift with, and it saves bending down quite as much to move the logs. Probably not a necessary tool, but one that I do use a fair amount. Some spikes. Uh, I've chosen to spike my logs together in the corners, as well as spike down my floorboards and floor joists or nail down. So some nails and spikes and the size of these will depend on the size of logs you're using. Next up is I got four log dogs made by a local, uh, kind of a friend of mine, a guy who lives locally. I know someone local who can build them. Uh, they're quite simple and just some scrap metal that they used. And these help hold the logs in place so that we've used them when we are notching. Well, first to set our log in place to make sure we like the alignment. Then as we scribe the log, it holds them in place. And then when we roll the log to make our notch cuts, again, these hold them in place. So pretty necessary tool, I think, for building with logs. Next up, this would not be a needed tool, but I do have skidding tongs. So some skidding tongs, and these are nice because if I'm working alone, I can hook them onto the log, wrap this around, say my shoulders, and then use my legs and upper body to, to lift or slide a log. Not necessary, and, uh, but something that I found a bit useful. More so if I'm working alone. Okay, moving along. Uh, a chisel. Not totally necessary if you're fairly skilled with the chainsaw notching, I think, but it is nice to sort of fine tune notches with. I've been using, I've been using this chisel in combination with this hardwood hammer and that works quite well. Next up are my log peeling tools. So again, I, I mentioned the ax is sometimes used, but the two main ones are a draw knife and the spud. Billy seems to prefer the draw knife, so you put it on the log and pull towards yourself to move the bark off. I prefer the spud so far, and to use the spud I use the hardwood hammer and just come along bringing up um, the bark sort of as I go around the side of the log. And um, that helps me peel that off, peel, peel the bark off. A hammer for nailing in some of the spikes, just a basic hammer. And then just a few more tools, really, a uh, small level. I did um, slab off the side of one log on each end so that the floorboards can butt directly into a flat face. And I used this to help level that, or plumb that, I think would be the right term. 
a chalk line. That's been useful so far. A string line and spirit level, I think is the term. So I use this to level my sill logs. Some chalk to go with the chalk line. Carpenter's pencil. I didn't realize this, although it's fairly obvious until I saw a YouTube short from another guy, but a uh, carpenter's pencil is a quarter inch thick and a half inch wide. So that can be handy as a rough measure. I have two measuring tapes. You really only need one. Um, the reason I have two, or the reason I've used two, is the, the basic type of measuring tape is just to measure things as I go. I also have this logger's tape. Um, which is nice in the woods for cutting the logs because it's got a hook on it and you can hook onto the log and measure more easily and also for measuring the diagonals to check how square the building is. If I'm alone, it's nice to be able to hook that on um, and not have to continually fight with the, uh, the measuring tape popping off. And then the last tool, which I'm not going to talk about in this video because I don't feel, I don't feel qualified enough to really talk about it yet, is the scribe. Uh, so I bought a scribe, double um, bubbles for um, making sure the scribe is oriented in the right vertical plane and the right horizontal plane. And I do hope to talk about this and share what I've learned, uh, but at this point I'm going to do that on another video when I feel a little more competent with the scribe. And so those are the tools. Oops. Those are the tools I'm using, which I'd say is fairly minimal, really. Most of these I had already. The only, the only thing I bought, actually, was the scribe. The rest of the stuff I'd already had, and probably most anyone who does any woodwork at all would ha have most of these tools. Uh, you're obviously able to make the hardwood hammers very easily. And uh, But anyway, so these are the tools that I use, and I hope that's helpful if you're thinking of what you might need to do something simple like this. Shouldn't say simple, but something, a basic type of cabin build.